Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel on Feynman Integration. Today we'll be uh, evaluating this integral, the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the negative x squared times natural log x dx. And we'll be using the Maclaurin series representation for the exponential function. Um, okay, so our first step, um, by the way, there's a big clue in that natural log x right there uh, that we're going to be replacing that with an x to the t. Um, because that really helps us recover that uh, natural log x when you uh, use the Leibniz rule to differentiate under the integral sign. So um, we're going to create a function of t equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of uh, x to the t e to the negative x squared dx. All right. Then uh, what we'll do is uh, take f prime of t using the Leibniz rule. So uh, that's going to give us f prime of t is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the t e to the negative x squared natural log x dx. Um, evaluating our f prime at the point t is equal to 0 will give us back our original integral. Okay. So this doesn't help us a whole lot yet. What we need to do now is uh, find a new representation for our f of t. And we'll do that by using the Maclaurin series representation for e to the x, um, except we're going to be using it on e to the negative x squared. But that's pretty easy. All you need to do is just put a negative and then a squared and then a negative like this. So yeah, we'll be replacing our e to the negative x squared with this. All right, so that's going to give us f of t is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the t times e to the negative x squared, which we'll be writing this way. So that is times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of, well, we'll rewrite this as negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n. Negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n. And then we'll still have over n factorial. And all of that is integrated with respect to x. Okay. Next, what we'll do is we'll bring in, we'll bring this x to the t inside our summation notation um, like this. Because, uh, x to the t is independent of n, and that's, that's what matters in the sum right there. So we can do that. Um, we can also switch the, uh, the integration and summation notations in this case using Fubini's theorem. You can't always do that, but in this case, you can. Um, an example of when you couldn't do that, by the way, let me, uh, let me rewrite this. Um, originally, I had tried uh, to make this the integral from 0 to infinity of that. And by the way, that, that integral does converge, but you can't, uh, you can't get the answer the same way that you get this answer. Um, for instance, if, if this was the integral from 0 to infinity, you could not switch the summation and integral notations because uh, the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the n plus t, to x to the 2n plus t, uh, that would not converge. So uh, you wouldn't be able to do it in that case. I just wanted to provide an example because I'm, I'm always just saying that there's no problems with convergence. And that's what I mean by a problem with convergence. Like, if you switch them and then all of a sudden you weren't able to evaluate the integral or the sum. All right. But we can do it in this case, so we will. So that's going to be integral from 0 to 1, and we'll have our sum notation on the outside. All right. We can bring out our negative 1 to the n over n factorial. All 
All right, integrating x to the 2n plus t from 0 to 1 dx is just going to give us 1 over 2n plus t plus 1. Okay, great. Now we have our... Um, our f of t, but we need f prime of t because that's what we're going to be evaluating at the point zero to get i. So let's just take a derivative with respect to t. So f prime of t is equal to the sum from n equals zero to infinity of, let's see, we'll still have negative one to the n over n factorial, but now we need to take the derivative uh, with respect to t of a set of 1 over 2n plus t plus 1. And that would give us negative 1 over 2n plus t plus 1 all squared. So we'll take care of that negative sign by just adding a 1 in front of, um, just adding a 1 in front of that n on the exponent on negative 1, and that would, that would switch the sign. Okay, so now we have n factorial over 2n plus t plus 1 all squared. And evaluating that at the point t is equal to 0 would give us the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 squared times n factorial. And that is the answer, and, um, oh, I'm sorry, and that is equal to i. Forgot to show that, yeah, because f prime at zero is i, and it's also this thing. Um, all right, yeah, so I don't think you can do any better than this. I've been wrong before on this channel, and people have corrected me in the comments, but I did briefly uh, research this sum, and uh, it doesn't appear to have any sort of special representations. So I think that's as good as you can do. But that's pretty good, because you'll notice that due to this n factorial in the denominator, that's going to approach the true value of that integral extremely quickly. I mean, if you, if you go through, let's just say, 10 iterations of this... I mean, you're going to be within at least 1 over 10 factorial um, from your true answer. And I mean, that's, it's actually going to be closer because you also have that 2n plus 1 squared. But that's kind of insignificant compared to your n factorial. Um, so just imagine if you, if you went through 20 iterations of this. You'd have some number over, you'd only be changing it from that point on. Uh, by a number less than 1 over 20 factorial. And 20 factorial is astronomical. I mean, that's it's a ridiculously large number. That means 1 over it is a ridiculously small number. So, yeah, it's going to approach the true value to that integral extremely quickly. And for an engineer or a biologist or a physicist, um, this is a good enough uh, answer for your integral. So anyway, there you go. Hope you enjoyed that.